welcome back to another 3D printed case build. This one I chose to call Little Boy S, and the S being simply that this case is very small. The case measures only 8.1 liters in size and is super easy to print and assemble, even for beginners, as it consists of only 6 flat printed pieces and the use of some very basic PC components. This case was designed using Shaper 3D, and you may notice that the 3D model itself does not really look like the final result at all. And the reason for that is because the hexagonal pattern you see on the external of the case is actually made in the slicer. And I'll be using Prusa Slicer to show you how you can create this pattern yourself. So, when we first import the STL into the slicer, the part will show up as a solid piece like this. And if we slice it right away with the standard settings, the part will also be sliced as one solid piece. But, if we go to the print settings, in the upper left corner, then to solid layers under layers and perimeters, we can actually adjust the top and bottom layers of the print, and we want to set both of these down to zero. If we now go back to slice the file, we see that the only thing that's being sliced is the same shape of the part, but only with infill and external walls. This type of infill we're using here is called honeycomb, and here we have the freedom to experiment with different infill densities, or even other types of infill, like for example gyroid. Gyroid uses this pattern of twists and lines that might remind a little bit of a sponge, allowing tons of air through while restricting the visibility to see through. So by using this method we can actually get a lot of different looks just based on what infill type we're using. I think this honeycomb pattern looks really awesome in this case, and I even found that this design with white filament fits really well together with some RGB lights. Just look at how cool this is. The case is really the perfect size for an on-desk setup, or a portable PC if you move around a lot. The entire body of this case consists of a total of 6 flat printed pieces that weigh in at just under 700 grams of filament total. And because all parts are printed flat, we also need no support material to minimize filament usage while still getting strong and reliable parts. Inside the case we can fit an ITX motherboard, a graphics card up to a maximum length of 190mm, and a SFX power supply. And the only storage option in this build are M.2s that are mounted directly to the motherboard. So, when designing this, the main goal was to make assembly as straightforward and simple as possible. Therefore, the case was designed so that the side panels, top and bottom, would all slide into each other using these tracks that are embedded into the parts. The four main panels simply slide in place and are securely attached just like that. Before we get there though, we need to install our motherboard and the other components. The motherboard standoffs will screw directly into the prefabricated holes in the side panel. The motherboard can then be lowered into place and secured with the normal mounting hardware. We can now grab the bottom panel and slide that into place followed by our GPU, which here is a 170mm long 1660 Super from Gigabyte. It's a good idea to also add the GPU power cable at this point, as it might get somewhat tight once the other panel is in place. Then the top panel can be slid into the track, followed by the opposite side panel. The sliding may require some gentle wiggling depending on your printer's tolerances, but it should be fairly smooth. Even though the chassis may look a little bit wobbly at this point, this will all be locked in place when the front and the back panels are installed later. The rear panel has a mount for the SFX power supply, and the air intake fan should be facing towards the outside of the case so it pulls air in from the side, rather than the center of the case as we don't want it to steal air from the CPU cooler. Before we can install the plate, we need to add an M3 threaded insert into this hole at the bottom. This is where we'll secure our GPU later. While our iron is still hot, we can also install four threaded inserts into the rear part of the top and bottom sliding panels. These will be used to keep our rear plate in place, one in each corner. When those have cooled down, we can move on to installing the rear panel with the power supply. And the side panel actually has this little shelf to support the inner corner of the power supply. This is just to prevent the rear panel from bulging out due to the weight of the power supply. It's also a good idea to remember to install the IO shield before adding the screws. Using some M3 by 10mm machine screws, the rear panel can be secured in place. These screws actually serve two purposes. One is the obvious, which is to mount the rear panel, but secondly, this also clamps the two sliding panels to the rest of the body, 
actually binding the whole assembly together and stiffening up everything. Don't forget to also add the M3 screw to secure the GPU in place. Now we can start adding the rest of our cables and we should be able to reach all the connectors from here in the front, but it might be a little tight with the CPU power cable all the way back there, so that one might be a good idea to add before securing the rear panel in place, especially if you have big hands. Now all the power cables are installed and what I've done so far is really just to add the CPU power cable all the way back there, then we have the 24 pin motherboard connector and lastly the power for the GPU. Then just proceeded to tidy up all the cables up in this corner behind the power supply so that they don't obstruct the airflow. I also added a 4 pin fan extension cable to connect to the front chassis fan later as it's much more convenient. The front panel of this case will be attached using magnets and we'll be using these 8 by 3 mm neodymium magnets that we simply will attach with a little drop of hot glue. Then we can just push the magnets into place and apply some pressure until the glue sets and we repeat this for both sides. The front panel itself also needs some 8 by 3 mm magnets. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different holes that need magnets. The middle four magnets can simply be attached just like the other ones with hot glue and some pressure, but the final two at the top we actually need to make sure that the magnet has the correct polarity, so it will attract to the other magnet already installed. If it's mounted the wrong way the magnets will reject each other pushing apart instead of attracting. To test this we simply attach the magnet to the other one, then keep track of which side is facing away from the other magnet and this side has to face down into the hole in the front panel. This is very important and once the glue sets you will most likely not be able to get the magnet back out without damaging the part and if it's the wrong way the worst case is you may need to reprint the front. So take your time here and make sure the magnet polarity is right on both sides. When all the magnets are in place we can install the front logo which consists of one printed part with another printed part placed in the middle. This part will simply drop into the printed hole in the front and to secure it we can use some super glue or hot glue. I'm using this super glue as it dries up almost invisible but you're free to use whatever glue you like here. Even melting it in place from the inside with a soldering iron might be an option. Once the glue has cured and the logo is in place, we're now ready to attach our front intake fan, which is a 140mm fan that will be attached right here. To mount the fan we'll be using computer fan screws and magnets. The magnets will stick to the screws and this design allows us to mount the fan to a one piece front panel without having any visible screws from the front. We can now add one screw to each of all the four corners. Make sure to add them to the air intake side and not the exhaust. Then the fan can be dropped in place aligning with the magnets for a pretty secure fit. These magnets are usually very strong when pulled directly apart but not so strong when sliding the parts sideways. Therefore I added these guiding pieces on all sides to keep the fan from moving sideways or up and down, making it so the fan can only be removed by pulling it straight out. The power button used in this build is a 12mm power button and I will link to the same or a very similar button in the description. Due to the thickness of the top panel you should get a similar button with the long threads like this one, so it can be secured in place properly. We can now plug in the button cables and tuck them away somewhere convenient. Finally we can connect our front intake fan to the extension cable and we're ready to put the front panel in place. One feature I added to the front panel mount was these guiding pins. These prevent sideways movement kind of like with the magnet fan mount. The top panel has slots and the front panel has pins and these together lock the panel in place very securely. This is really a necessary step as my first prototype of this case did not have any of these pins, neither for the front panel itself or the fan mount and just by applying very little sideways force this would happen. And the case would just fall apart. Just see how the two models compare with and without the guiding pins. The updated model I can shake all I want and it's not going anywhere. The only way to actually open the front is by pushing the panel forwards like this, making the build very rigid yet simple to build which was one of my main goals when starting this design. Overall I am so happy with the outcome of this project and the case fits perfectly in an on-desk setup and performance wise it actually does really well given its compact size. And it's perfect for 1080p gaming 
but will also run some games at 1440p at 60 plus FPS with some lower settings. This case turned out to be a real beauty much thanks to the cool patterns created by the infill. This build is also the perfect size for those nights when you're heading over to your friend's house to have a LAN party. Just throw it in your bag along with some energy drinks and you're all set for the evening. You can even add some RGB lights to the inside for some cool lighting effects and that extra gaming performance. Speaking of performance, let's look at some temperatures. The CPU in this build is the Ryzen 7 5700G and it's cooled by a Noctua L9A low profile cooler and it maxes out at 79 degrees running a Cinebench stress test. The GPU is a Gigabyte 1660 Super ITX and running a firmware stress test it maxes out at only 67 degrees. These are for me both within comfortable ranges. Even though the CPU fan might ramp up a bit when running at max, the noise levels are still within acceptable ranges given the small form factor. All the temperatures were recorded in an ambient room temperature of around 24 degrees Celsius. The name of this case, Little Boy S, as I mentioned in the beginning, the S stands for small, and I'm considering the possibility of expanding this design to a bigger and more compatible version, like an M or even an L size. Do you guys think I should create some bigger models of this same concept to support a wider variety of parts? Leave a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments if you'd like that, and also let me know what parts you wish it had support for. If you're interested in downloading the 3D files for this project, you can download them for free through the printables link in the video description. There you can also find all my other cases I've designed through the years, and feel free to check out the videos on those as well. I'm always looking for great new ideas for future projects and I'd love to hear all your feedback. Both suggestions for new projects and also feedback on my current project so that I can improve my designs and make future projects even better. Every project is a learning experience and looking back a couple years I see a lot of improvement both in video quality and overall project quality and I'm always looking to get better and learn new tricks, so please let me know what you think, what could have been better, what are you missing, what do you want to see in the future, it all helps to keep this content coming for you guys. I'd like to thank you all for inspiring me to keep doing this, and I'm closing in on 10,000 subscribers on this channel now, and I'm really blown away by all the positive feedback I've been getting on my previous projects. I see a lot of you guys are commenting on multiple of my videos, and it really warms my heart to see that so many of the same familiar names are returning to the comments section from video to video and I'm very grateful for that. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always feel free to leave a like in this video or even subscribe to the channel if you find my content interesting and want to see more. Thanks again and I'll see you again in the next one.